Right. Well, you're friends with Send Dog, and his brother is Mellow Man Ace. Right. And I don't think people realize how big the song Mentirosa was. Huge. It's huge. Opened up many doors. Huge. I remember I was living in the Bay, and that was like the biggest record in the oh, Bay. Yeah. He hit a lick with that one, Oh, man. he did. Well, his biggest song ever. Yeah. To this day. True that. And uh, uh, Tony G produced it. Mm -hmm. Julio G was his DJ, who later, you know, became our DJ. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. I mean, he had it all clicking right there because he what he did was he brought that Spanglish style out there that nobody was, you know, fucking with. I mean, Kid Frost too. Th them two were sort yeah. of two guys, you know, that 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 popped that style off. Um, one in the street form and one in the you know like the party the smooth the smooth, yeah. smooth homie party form you know yeah. what i'm saying and uh, yeah they both pioneered that shit you know and they opened it up opened up the doors for cats with with getting in with that particular style right so so here you are your friends with send dog and his brother is now blowing up as mellow man ace and mugs was in the group 7a3 yeah he was the DJ slash producer. Yeah. And they had uh, Coolin and Cali. Coolin and Cali, yeah. Which, which was a moderate success. And then they did Colors for the movie Colors. Oh, okay. Or It's a Mad World. It's a Mad World. It's uh, yeah. a Mad, Mad World. They did a sound. Colors a was an Ice-T, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Colors was Ice-T. But yeah. I'm saying on the movie Colors, the movie. they did a song called Mad, Mad World on that soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So now two of the people around you have are connected to success in the music industry right you know major label back then there really were not you know independent labels like that it was yeah there was a few there was a few but these guys were now were now on majors so you guys form a group and originally it was called dvx right devastating vocal excellence yeah they decided to leave that e out <laughs> i'm sure it was really fresh at that day it was when you look back and look at it yeah, now you're like <laughs> it's like ah I didn't make the name up though. It, it, it existed before I came into the crew. Right. Uh, but what, what's a trip was um, before '73, and and um, even before Mello hit his lick. You know, we were all hanging together before that. Like Muggs was part of our crew, and you know, we were all just working on demos, trying to figure it out. And I believe Muggs Muggs met Brett B and and uh, his brother Sean through another homie that we had, through a mutual homie. And they, you know, they made a connection being that they were both from the East Coast, they, they, they caught a vibe. And when that, when that, all that was happening, that's when I sort of kind of, you know, slipped out the back door and, and started banging and shit like that. And they stood hard in the paint in terms of, of music. So as, you know, Muggs gets put on with 783, he starts working with Mello on on some of his demos and 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 sort of uh, was formulating Mello's first shit that would go out on Delicious Vinyl before he got on the Capitol. So you know we were all working together, but I was kind of out of the loop until you know until Mello really you know got his deal going, and that's when they asked me to come back and and start trying to write for him. But we were all a crew before any of that shit happened so you know mugs i think always recognized that i was a pretty decent writer and if i was around the right people i could learn to be a really good writer so he would you know have me hanging out with brett who brett taught me how to write a song as opposed to a rap you know so i learned a lot from that shit. but you know it, it was like um things needed to go that way i think as opposed to us trying to you know, go for and make these demos the way we were making them before this shit happened because we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Um, but when Muggs got with them, you know, he got around other people and he learned the, 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 the process of how you fucking create a song from scratch, how you produce a song and all that shit. And, uh, you know, that those were the those were the things that sort of carved shit out for us later because he learned all those things and then brought them to the table when he decided to to connect Sen and I back together as a group. Because before we were sort of just backing up Mellow, Sen and I. And then I got I got put off and then I, you know, I went I went back into the to the shit I was doing and Sen Dog became Mellow's hype man for a time. 
You know what I mean? So everybody was functioning and I was like pretty much the last one in the loop, man. I mean, it took me a second to to catch up to where they were at. Writing, I was there. But in terms of performing and having a voice that motherfuckers would fuck with, it, t- it took me a minute. But yeah, man, it, it was uh, in those early times. And even, even after 783, you know, Muggs was like constantly around... Um, you know, like cats that were related to uh, Rhyme Syndicate. I mean, we were always hanging out with Rhyme Syndicate cats, man. Yeah. They, they were like our mentors yeah. and shit like that. And Everlast was in that group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, it, those were fun fucking times. They were big learning experiences because some of the guys that, that we were hanging out with were dudes that we looked up to like and, you know, we're like, fuck, we want to do what they're fucking doing. So we just sort of paid attention. The do's and don'ts, if you will. 